Hello, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining today. Please confirm that you can listen to me properly. My name is Daniel Alarcón. I'm the technical support manager here at FileCloud. And I'll be presenting today together with Jack Cafati, who is our, one of our technical engineers that are, he's mostly in charge of new sales and getting to understand the product better for you when you're joining and learning about the product. So thanks, uh, Jack, for joining me today. Hey, everybody. Okay, so we're going to go over a quick recap of what's going to be new here in the next uh, week or couple of weeks on FileCloud 20.1. And Jack is going to show it on the screen for you after that. If you have any questions, uh, you can write them down on the questions uh, or wait up until the end and we'll be looking to address them as, as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay. So just to do a, a quick uh, highlights of what's coming, we, have, uh, we now have integration with multiple SSO IDPs. Uh, before this, you can only use one now, it's similar to what we already had before with the multiple active directories, you can also do it with the single sign-ons. Next, we also have Microsoft Office built-in tag support. So all those uh, document properties that are already there on Microsoft are now supported on the metadata that we have. We also have an expanded user notification now you have more granular control on noti email notifications for, for individual users and for individual folders for those individual users. It's no longer just policies, but you can go as granular as a user. You have now single sign-on support for the Outlook add-in. Uh, that, was, that was the one client application missing this and is now integrated. You can also classify larger files and identify files that don't have metadata. That's also in, in important now. You no longer can just do classifications only if it has metadata. You can also do it when it doesn't. We now have uh, all the public shares can actually use the Office 365 uh, preview share. That means that any document, it's going to be more natively shown on the web and uh, not only with the JavaScript or the Java enabled preview viewer that we had before, now is also using Office 365. We have complete Arabic support, so you can change the admin and the user UI to the Arabic language. We can now integrate with multiple IDPs on a tenant. If you have a multi-tenant setup, this is also possible now. You can configure custom error messages for the uh, for IDP. So in case anything uh, you want to show, it doesn't have to show the native error coming from, from the IDP provider. You can also do a, a custom error by IDP. And you can also do automatic IDP redirection. Uh, that is going to be based on email domain. Okay. And as I mentioned, you can see here that in the metadata section, now we can see things like the title, the owner, the date, descriptions, when it was created, all this kind of information that it's already in those office documents with the office, office tags or office document properties, that can also be part of the metadata. And by being part of the metadata, you can integrate with uh, the document classification and the DLP, so you can do things like preventing downloads or preventing sharing. When you're, when you're using this kind of tags, you can also do something, just for example, if your office documents uh, have something like a privacy tag on the, on the document properties, you can check on that with a, with a DLP and prevent downloading those files or prevent sharing those files. Or you can do, any any content classification that you want with these kind of properties, it's it's now also possible directly with the metadata. We have an expanded notification and control, right? As I mentioned, we used to do this only based on on policy policy groups, but not individual users. Now you can go for individual users, or you can even go as deep as a specific folder paths of the user. 
that you don't want any notifications uh, for any of the file operations, or you may be interested for the file operations, but not when you do it yourself. So you can disable or enable each of these individual notifications per user, per user folder, and it can go as granular as wanted. So you no longer have to be just relying on policy groups. We have, as I mentioned, the signal sign-on support for the Outlook adding. You're now able to just log in, same as you do with the Sync application and the Drive application before. You can now do it as well with the Outlook adding. Okay, you can identify files without the metadata, right? You, you can now uh, use these on CC or DLP and you can search and classify and create any, any retention rules on files that don't have metadata. As I mentioned, we can preview any Microsoft Office file on the web when you do the public shares using the Office 365 Preview Viewer. Uh, that's uh, going to maintain the aspect ratio and do all things more natively on those documents. And it's not going to show any, any kind of uh, weird We'll preview that it sometimes happens with JavaScript previewers. As I mentioned, we have our Arabic language support. So you can change fully the UI from the front end and the back end on Arabic language. And yeah, I'm going to switch over to you now, Jack. Awesome. Now just give me a minute so I can share my screen. Okay. Yeah, you should be able to do that now. There we go. Uh, it's my screen coming up nicely? Yes. We can awesome. See. Okay. So as Daniel was mentioning, right, I'm going to take you through some of the features that we have changed. Um, some of them, we're going to be able to see them through the UI. Some of them require a small configuration change. So for example, to top up that list, right, integrate with multiple IDP providers. Now, this capability has been added in our backend where you can access our IDP configuration sample and you can add it to configuration there. Pretty much it's like what we already had with uh, multiple active directories in which you can integrate with multiple ADs. The configuration is pretty similar when we're talking about multiple SSO providers. So you do one of the configurations here automatically when this is done, it gets saved in our backend towards file looks like this more or less. And then pretty much you have to redo the parameters, right? The name, the mail, the given name, just fill out all of this fields that you have here and you're gonna be able to integrate with multiple IDP providers. Moving forward, we also added support for built-in Microsoft metadata tags, as you can see here. We can multiple metadata tags such as title, subject, creator, keywords, description, class modified, by, created, modify, and category. So how does this really function? At this point, when you upload a file within File Cloud, you're going to have the capability of actually viewing what metadata did it pull up from Microsoft. This is going to give you a lot of benefit towards being able to provide the DOP rules, like for example, hey, if a document has a metadata that you already added called private, for example, or confidential, automatically File Cloud will be able to pick that metadata up using our built-in feature. As well, you're gonna have really nice features and capabilities that will allow you to apply security rules to such files. So for example, in here, I can see the creator of my file and just some other information that it has, the created on date, the modified date. If you have any more or any different metadata tags, it will pick them up. So for example, in here, I have PowerPoint presentation, I'm the creator and the name. So this text will be picked up automatically when you upload a document, they're read directly by File Cloud automatically without having you to add them manually. Now going a little bit back over to our admin portal, we added a new tab, actually a new option under manage Call notifications. And the way notifications work, it's now, it's actually pretty interesting because before, when you did a share, you only had an option to either allow or not allow notifications. 
or as a group, maybe you could disable certain notifications. But now we're taking that a step further. As you see here, I have my path called uh, for a specific file for a test PNG. And I wanna use my own notification settings, right? In here, I can send, okay, I want the notification if there was an upload. I want a notification if somebody shared it. I want a notification if somebody renamed this file or even if they locked it. So before you had either all of them or none of them, right? Pretty much you were locked down to not selecting specific op options. But now if you have a folder or a file that you want to give your access to some users to receive such notifications, you can easily do this by clicking on the at rules. We click on at rule, this little pop-up will come up. You can search for the name of the user which you're going to be given access, you add the path. The path most likely is under the team folder path, for example, the path is gonna look similar to team folder, folder X, folder Y, right? Just to give you an idea on how the path looks like. And then you can just use my def use default settings for notification or use my own net settings. Own settings means, okay, which ones do I only want to receive notification? I only want to receive a notification if the file has been locked or deleted. Or maybe there's a very confidential file and you do not really care about receiving notifications, but you mostly care about um, going over and just selecting, hey, I want to receive a notification, there's a share of this file, okay? Now, moving over that list a little bit, right? We also added some really cool features towards SSO support for Outlook add-in. So before in Microsoft Outlook, you had to actually log in with your username and password. Now when you install a plugin and you actually add a new message or create a new message, let's do that from scratch, create a new message. Now you go into file browser, for example, or settings, either or, if you have not logged in, the settings will come up and you're given the option to log in using SSO. Once you click this, little link right here, it's gonna automatically pop up so you can authenticate using your SSO. Now, other nice features that we added within 20.1 is the classification of large files and identifying files without metadata. So if we go over to our metadata, said so now you're gonna have this toggle that we can enable for you, files without metadata. When you click on the files without metadata, this is gonna do a quick search on all the system and tell us which files do not have a metadata tag, like the ones you've seen here. This is gonna give you a great capability because once you create a metadata tag, you can easily just click on edit. If you have any metadata set, you can select it and add it. That way, if you have a very secure and strong system that says, hey, every single document that you upload to file, for example, needs to be authorized, prior to being previewed, right? But maybe somebody turned off that feature and now you start seeing that there are documents that do not have such metadata and you need to add that metadata to be able to log that document. As well, it serves as a good practice purpose to see which files can you classify even better, right? Now, we're a little bit over so that we can just close our admin portal you're actually going to be able to see some really cool features that we added under settings, server, under language. Now you have the capability of selecting Arabic language. I'm gonna select Arabic language support, for example, only for the admin portal. The whole UI changes completely to display the Arabic language. A little bit down, then we go back again and we can change it back to English. Okay, now a feature that you guys might have already know that we had is Office 365 integration using our WIP. To enable such feature, just remember you gotta go into web edit and, oops, my apologies, you gotta go into web edit and make sure it's enabled. But what's the real benefit here when we're talking about Office 365? I have created a limited user, for example, called John, John Doe, right? 
John Dell, as you can see, is a limited user. As you might know, in a prior version, limited users did not have the capability of previewing documents using Office 365. Then they had to use the JS Previewer. That might change a little bit of the format or cause any other issue that you might have experienced. Using FileCloud 20.1, that won't be the case anymore as we have added support for Office 365 on limited users. I'm logging in as Joe Doe. Joe Doe is my limited user, as you can see. Go to share with me, click on the webinar, and then now I can click under this PowerPoint, and when I click on preview, it's gonna automatically open up with Office 365. This is gonna give you a capability of a better overview of the system, just a nicer interaction of it, right, and just a better performance overall when trying to preview your files. As you might know, sometimes when previewing files with um, JavaScripts, right, that convert the file, you might experience certain issues in which you're not gonna have actually the exact same format or there's a change. But while using Office 365 to preview your documents, that changes as it communicates back so you can preview the such documents. For example, your users, now when you change a public document, and maybe you only added the preview feature, they're gonna be able to read this document without any inconvenience. Now, yeah, that's been mostly the new features that we added to 20.1. Added to it, we have made a lot of improvements towards speed, uh, how files are read, um, optimization and the way that it interacts with the backend. But overall, features that you can play with and test and check out, these are the ones. Right now, I'm gonna open up a small section of this webinar for some of your questions, if there are any. Please feel free to post them on our uh, chat box within the, the Zoom option. You're gonna have an option to actually be able to add your questions, feel free to do so. If, if there are no questions or if you have any questions moving forward and you need uh, help from us, you can always reach us at support at help.codelab.com. And you can always check our documentation for any of these futures or any of the other futures that we already have enabled in FileCloud. We appreciate your time today. We thank you for being part of this. And thank you very much, Jack, for, for helping me out today. Anytime. By the way, team, just keep in mind to access support docs, you need to go to getfilecloud.com, support docs, and you can access all this information that we've shown you from there. We are constantly updating our documentation, and every single feature that you have seen as well has a support documentation added. You can search keywords such as um, metadata to search for some of the features that we have shown you create a new metadata set, managing metadata. You're gonna see a lot of the new options in this section, right? The added that you can easily look into and see uh, what are the changes made and how can you set them up. And yeah, just before we let you go, there seems we have a awesome. Okay. This version will be officially launched. Um, I believe it's going to be a week or two from now. For multi-tenant support, by the way, we have made some changes, right, as mentioned a little bit before, where now you're going to be able to integrate it with multiple SSO providers. Okay. As... I've seen no new questions coming in. Just always keep in mind to produce our support team 
at support at coldlake.com or feel free to visit our documentation at getfilecloud.com forward slash support docs. As well, at the end of this session, you're going to be receiving an email with details on our new features. Hope everybody stays safe and have a great day. Thank you for joining our FileCloud webinar. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.